is Rob Sampson, state senator from Wolcott. He is busy at work at the state capitol <laughs> trying to fight off the tide, the tsunami of hateful anti-American legislation that is the standard procedure up there these days. Rob, thanks for taking the time to talk with us. It's my pleasure, Todd. Did you say tide or did you say tsunami, which would be much I, more accurate? I went from tide to tsunami. <laughs> Indeed. Well, that is a very accurate uh, representation of what's going on in Hartford. I've so never I was, seen it I, I was yeah. watching some hearing on the uh, CT, CTN today, the, uh, the cable channel, and I w there was a woman talking for about a minute, and then you popped on. And it was so wonderful to have you there. It made governments in, in Connecticut, it, the state government, sound like it actually, there were some good ideas and they believed in the American system of government. Well, I do my best, Todd, because I'm one of 187 legislators, but I more than make up for probably 30% of the actual airtime <laughs> of people talking uh, in committee and, and on the floor of the Senate, that's for sure. Uh, and that's because I think it's important. Uh, and, and far too often, uh, the competing voice of America's history and uh, love of freedom and personal responsibility is lost in the conversation unless somebody speaks up, and that person is often me. So anyway, I, I was just playing, in preparation for you coming on, I was playing some Walter Williams. And I'll, I'll play this for you to, to uh, help you keep your spine uh, in proper condition to to fight off the tsunami method to understand uh, oh wait a sec i'm i'm not at the right place one sec because this is not this is not a hard concept to initial get initial premise is that each of us owns ourselves that is i am my private property and and you are your private property now when you isn't that a great i mean that really if that's a quick way to tell people what the premise of America is supposed to be, right? Absolutely, 100%. That is uh, derived from many of the founding um, uh, you know, authors that uh, created the ideas that are behind America's founding. Uh, I think he referenced Bastiat in that quote when you played it earlier, mm -hmm. and that's exactly right, because he's talking about um, the origin of property and um, the opposite of property, which is plunder. And if you've read, uh, read the law, you know that that's what it's all about. It's about uh, defending the notion that each of us uh, have a right to our own creation, and um, that including, includes ourselves and what we produce, so, and that includes the work we produce. And that's what's at stake in America today. Um, there's so many bills up there, Todd, that are redefining your ownership of yourself. Uh, yeah, so let me play one time. more short cut. Sure. And then I think that sets you up completely. And it's the it has the same uh, moral uh, immoral overtones as when as private plunder. If you privately take uh, a person's money to give to somebody else for whatever reason, well, well, that's private theft. And when the government does it through uh, Congress, it's just it's still theft, but it's just legalized theft. Legalized theft. So that's the thing you're trying to fight off, which I, I just uh, am so happy that you're there doing it. It was so much fun to just randomly uh, hit the play button for a hearing today, and there you were. Yeah, no, thank you for saying that. And um, I yesterday I was there um, starting 9 in the morning. We had a little uh, tech, technical glitch, so we didn't actually get started until the afternoon. But I was there fighting off one of the worst policies of the year, which is a uh, the imposition of rent caps. They want to tell property owners that they can only raise their rent 2.5% per year, not considering the fact that there is inflation that far outpaces that and expenditures. And their ultimate goal, they keep repeating, is that they want to create more affordable housing. And I keep asking them, how do you propose to create more affordable housing by um, by starving the people who invest in property. Exactly. You're, you're creating a deterrent to property creation and, uh, you know, more affordable housing. But they don't care because the ultimate goal really is to um, eliminate the principles of America, starting with knowledge that you own your own self, which is why they have numerous bills that limit the um, – the individual right to 
make personal body choices on medication, on vaccines. There's a bill out there that says that you are going to become a uh, organ donor, whether you choose to or not. It's just an indication to you as an individual rep, uh, citizen in Connecticut that you're no longer a citizen. Your body belongs to the government and you're a subject of that government. And property rights is the other thing that they are attacking every day. The idea that you don't actually own your property or have a right to the fruits of your own labor. It's so scary, Todd. And they're, they're coming harder and faster every day. Do you, what do you think their, their motive actually is? I mean, you alluded to it just then, but do, do, do you think it's, it's all one thing or the other, or there are a bunch of different motives piled in? Like, what, what, why is it, is it philosophical? Do they hold capitalism in contempt? Or is it just that this is a really cool way to hold power if you can, instead of letting the people keep their own money because they earned it, you can make up all kinds of stories and force them to give it to you? It's a combination of all of those things. Uh, people are varying in degrees of intelligence and wisdom, and certainly that means the ability to strategize and use wisdom in the way they want to craft government. One thing I can tell you is that they are not – absolutely not trying to come up with good public policy that benefits everyone. They are certainly um, focused on uh, trying to um, ingratiate themselves with different factions of the population. Uh, the people that showed up for that uh, testimony, of course, were landlords, uh, maybe half of the, uh, maybe a little less than half of the people that testified, and the other people were, were tenants. But most of those people that were um, coming to that hearing as tenants were also very much involved in other things. They were active members of the Communist Party. They're active members of various Democrat uh, community organizing groups. So these were the, the real strong um, left-wing, far left-wing activists that are, that are pushing this agenda. And the sad part is that they are growing in number, mm -hmm. and those people are driving the bus of the modern Democratic Party. And that's what's so scary. And that, I think, by the way, to your comments just before I got on the air about, you know, days gone by where we, we enjoyed life much more and, you, you know, cars were in the driveway on Sunday. Well, the difference wasn't that cars were in the driveway on Sunday. The difference was that we lived in a society that was cohesive where people respected the notion of private property and personal responsibility. And I'm afraid almost half, maybe more than half in some places, uh, don't agree with those things anymore. Yeah, well, that's a, it's a very difficult situation to be in because I think that those of us who could have been fighting this off over the past um, decades didn't really understand that the march to liberalism was something so dangerous. And I've always, I've always been disappointed in Ronald Reagan, of all people, because he was such a devout conservative. Uh, at least that's how he was presented. And yet the part of him that was, was the legacy was he worked with the other side and he compromised. And it seems to me that compromise on the stuff that they talk about, you know, that what they talk about on the left is not so different from what Democrat presidential candidates who were the losers because the, remember the chronic losing that Democrats went through 40, 50 years ago because they, they just put up these candidates who were too liberal. They were saying all the same stuff. Right. Oh, yeah, they're far more liberal now, if anything. And that pragmatism that you're speaking of with Reagan and with most of the Republican Party today is our downfall because we are no longer defending our uh, principles and this great country from a position of strength and um, knowledge of history uh, and proof. You know, I mean, we, we have the proof of Mer America and its creation and its success on our side <laughs> to make the case. And we're not when we're failing to point that out every chance we get. Um, and that pragmatism is, is, is what is costing us the battle because uh, Republicans are quick to try and negotiate uh, terms. Uh, they're far more reasonable people. Uh, you know, the, the, the radicals in our society are from the far left. Those are the people that do not compromise. They we're don't want to hear it. If you, Sorry, I was just going to re-identify you. State Senator Rob Sampson is here from Wolka. But, but bring this over to the – there's a lot of interest in the um, – there's a lot of interest in the, the bills that are uh, being discussed about rent control and a lot of concern about it because I think it's such a it's such a label for the kind of socialistic big government control of the marketplace that 
we've seen come from time to time, but now looks like it's picking up steam. Yeah, without a doubt. And um, I, I hope that the people listening on the air today are hearing me and not thinking that I'm trying to exaggerate a position or anything else. I, I'm trying to be a clarion call to let people know that we're losing our, our state right now. We are losing it every day. We are outnumbered at the state capitol. And that doesn't mean just that the Democrats have two to one margins in the House and Senate. I mean that every time there is a hearing on a bill that is going to change our lives for the foreseeable future, maybe forever, um, the opposition shows up in droves. And we have very few people on our side willing to defend strong positions of liberty. It's just that's the fact of the matter. And that's why they're uh, picking up steam and, and we're falling way, way behind. Rob Sampson, hold on one sec. We'll take a quick break and we'll continue the conversation on WTIC. Now back to you. Yes, WTIC. Is that Rob on hold? Because I just got a text from him saying he dropped. Is he still there? Can you double check? Roland, can you double check and see if that's Rob on hold? You sure? Okay, good. Maybe it's an old text. I don't know. I just saw one saying that he got knocked off. Hey, Rob. No Rob there. All right, Rob, now you can call back in. 860-522-9842. Rob is a state senator from Wilkin, and he is the most adamant of the ones I've talked to who um, care deeply about the Constitution and want to protect it. Uh, and uh, there's not much protecting of the Constitution going on up there, and, and that's, you know, that's the big problem. Not just constitutional rights, but proper government and all that. Sorry about that, Rob. It's all good. Glad so, to be back. Um, so fill us in on the, the big fights that are going on right now. Well, I, my, my hope is that I can start filling you in more regularly about uh, the bills that are coming. But sadly, we get very little notice. Uh, the public, in fact, is only uh, required to receive five days' notice before a public hearing on a bill. And the Democrats are very clever. That means uh, Thursday night, 11.59 p.m., they can post something for a Tuesday, 9 a.m. Uh -huh. hearing. You know, it's, It does, doesn't give you a lot of time to be proactive about it. And but how often does that you know, kind of uh, deliberate manipulation of what's very not generous to begin with, You know, how much are they messing with it to make it worse? Uh, 100 percent of the time. OK, that yeah, no, and, uh, that. in fact, in, in fact, if you're a member of the minority, you have it even worse because that's the public's notice for a hearing. But suppose I'm, we're going to have a meeting to actually debate and vote on bills. Mm -hmm. The requirement for deadline then is 6 p.m. the day before the meeting. So that's the maximum notice you could have to know what we're going to vote on the following day, maybe at nine in the morning doesn't give you a lot of time to prepare. And, in fact, you can walk into that 9 a.m. meeting and they can tell you, hey, you know, we have substitute language. We, we've changed the wording in all the bills. Here you go. <laughs> you know? So it's only the, o the only thing they're committing themselves to is the bill number will be discussed. But it could be a whole different uh, set of words from what you might have originally looked at. Right. And, then, and you were expected to debate it uh, right there and on the spot. Um, and it's even worse on the floor of the, the House or Senate because the majority controls the agenda and they can put the order of the bills anytime they want. And one of the most common things you will see, Todd, and in fact, I joke all the time with my colleagues that we only pass titles out of committee mm -hmm. because what you'll see is if you're watching the House or the Senate, the uh, chairman of that committee from the Democrats will stand up, introduce the bill. And the very first thing they will say is I have a strike all amendment, which effectively means they're striking the entire bill and replacing the language with something else. <laughs> It's a cut and paste. And imagine, imagine being, uh, you know, the minority representative charged with uh, debating that subject matter, and you got a couple hundred page bill, and they just give you a brand new version of it, um, you know, two minutes before you're supposed and to. And they debate. say, "Go ahead, debate." Exactly, and it's happened to me more times than I can count. And you get very, very adept at it because um, you can use that opportunity just to start asking random questions to take up time so your colleagues can go back in the room and decipher what it actually says. <laughs> yeah, because they don't know either, right? They don't know either, but that you're buying time for them so they can figure it out and come back and debate the bill for real. Mm -hmm. it's, it's madness, and it is a complete injustice because it's not what was intended, and the people deserve a lot better than that. 
and the people just aren't aware of how things work and how deliberately the ideas of believing in democratic principles, which Democrats like to talk about, but you're saying they deliberately destroy. We've got one minute. Tell us something, Rob Sampson, that we need to I know. can't stress enough how important it is that people start tracking what is going on in the state government. I know a lot of people watch the federal government. Turn on CTN. Follow your legislators, Democrats or Republicans. Find out what's going on at the Capitol. Start to sign up and testify on bills. You can testify on Zoom nowadays, which means you just you sign up and they give you a time and you show up for three minutes and you tell them how you feel about things. We can make a world of difference. I can't tell you, Todd, the number of times I've been in a committee meeting where there's 200 people in favor of some terrible, terrible policy that will do major damage to the business uh, environment in the state or something else. And there's one person, maybe the lobbyist from, you know, the Connecticut Business and Industry Association who shows up uh, by himself. You know, <laughs> it, that's it's terrible. Bad. Yeah, it's terrible. And we got to get our side involved in the fight. Rob Sampson, state senator from Wilkett. Thanks for being here. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks so much, Todd.